Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. January and February tends to be my second favorite time of the year, just behind July and August, because in January, we'll see plenty of quarterly cash flow reports being released. And then we move, in, we move straight into February, which is half year or year reporting for the majority of companies on the ASX. At the beginning of each quality report month, I am always on the lookout for that company that releases the first Appendix 4C. And I have decided to do a video on that company, no matter the company. Now, over the past few quarters, the company that has released the first Appendix 4C has been XREF, XF1, and I am a shareholder of that company, so I have no problems doing a video on XREF. However, for the December quarter, the first company to release their Appendix 4C is Triple 3D. I think that's how you pronounce it. The name of the company has three threes and then a D. This is a 3D uh, printing company. Now, XREF didn't release their Appendix 4C, but they did release their preliminary results. So for some reason, they know the numbers, but just decided not to release uh, the Appendix 4C just yet. In fact, they did give us a date and it's towards the end of the month. So congratulations to Triple 3D. You are the first company to release their Appendix 4C for the December quarter. And hence, I'm doing a video on you. Before I started a bit of research for this video, the only thing I knew about Triple 3D is that they are a 3D printing company. And they do have a strategy to commercialize its 3D printing intellectual property. And they do have cash flow, some revenue coming in. And their main three main revenue streams include the sale of figurines through the mini league platform. So this is something I did not know anything about this company. And I've got a little picture there of some of their figurines, the New South Wales and Queensland State of Origin teams. I went through the Mini League um, website. They've got a lot of photos of all these figurines. In fact, one photo they have an AFL player holding his particular figurine. Uh, so interesting, uh, a little bizarre that uh, people want to buy these sort of figurines, but whatever floats your boat. They also sell or sell bobbleheads through its respective channels, and they also have consulting work and the 3D printing of parts to customer specifications, so sort of like bespoke work. So they do generate revenue. However, how has that revenue been growing if it has been growing at all? So that's one of the things I'll be looking at for triple 3D printing. Whenever I am researching a company, one of the places I do go to is the company's website. Now, if a company doesn't have a website, that is almost an instant red flag in itself. And as I go to or went to triple 3D's homepage, uh, the main thing that I did see on their homepage was a 3D printing industry report written by ARK Investment, which is led by Kathy Wood, who is considered a bit of a legend in disruptive technologies, even though her main fund has decreased in share price by 50% over the past three to six months. Anyway, they did have this a link to a 3D printing industry report written by ARK uh, Investment Management. So I clicked on that link and it took me to the interest report. Unfortunately, the industry report is six years old. So I'm not sure how relevant it is anymore. I would prefer a more updated industry report, but it's interesting that they have this six year old report on their home webpage. Now some facts in regards to Triple 3D. They were founded on the 7th of January, 2015 and listed almost or just over one year later in August 2016. It was sort of a backdoor listing via Oz Brewing. Now Oz Brewing actually listed on the ASX in 2006, probably the worst timed um, listing because it was about one or two years later that they went into administration. More than likely that was because of the GFC. They remained in administration for what seemed like the longest time. So I went through all the announcements and it seemed like they remained in administration for about 2008 for almost four or five years, but eventually Oz Brewing became Triple 3D in 2016. So they've actually been on the ASX, this company, for about six years. Maybe that's why they have that interest report from 2016. They just haven't changed that 
homepage. Chairman is John McKinindy. I did not find any information about who the CEO is or maybe the managing director, but there's a lot of information about the chairman and he has a 15% holding in the company. Maybe that's why there was a lot of information about him. One of the main shareholders or the main shareholder uh, is Lax Consulting with a 17% holding. I think one of the main reasons they are the major shareholder of this company is because of debt. So 3D printing have borrowed money from Lax Consulting and some of that borrowings has turned into equity. The market cap of this company, $11 million. That's at a share price of 0.4 cents, not 4 cents, 0.4 cents. So not much lower, it can go from here on in. And the TIG code for 333D, of course, is T3D. Though 333D is a revenue producing company, there's not, not a lot there. In fact, revenue fell $200,000 from uh, 2020 to 2021 and finished at $476,000. Gross margins are fairly nice at 68%. Now, even though they don't have a, lot, have a lot of revenue, they were operational cash flow positive for the year by $90,000. The previous year they were operational cash flow negative by $22,000. However, they are loss making by $340,000 in financial year 21. I only have $99,000 of net cash, more than likely, based off that, they would want to raise a little bit more money. So they did do a couple of raising, $500,000 of <clears throat> cash brought, brought in by that couple of raising. But to bring in $500,000, they had to issue something like 360 million shares. And the price to sales ratio, based off revenue of 476000 is fairly high at 23. On the 9th of December, Triple 3D did release a really interesting announcement in regards to an exclusive 3D printing service supply agreement with crypto artist and NFT creator Giant Swan to incorporate 3D printing in his artistic creations. The reason I really like this announcement is the amount of buzzwords that Triple 3D did use. For instance, just crypto and artists combine that together. That's probably a buzzword these days. NFT is definitely a bit of a buzzword. Even 3D printing, even though it's not really a buzzword, I do see it becoming a buzzword uh, in, during 2022, and if not this year, maybe the next five years. And then they describe Giant Swan's crypto art as reality meets virtual reality meets the metaverse. Can you get any more buzzwords than virtual reality meets the metaverse? Now let's have a look at Triple 3D's operational cash flow for the December quarter. Now typically I will go back one year ago to look at the previous year's similar quarter, but I'm not going to do that with Triple 3D simply because this company is not producing a lot of revenue or cash receipts, and we can tell that just by well we can tell that just by looking at the financial year results. But also if we have a look at this particular quarter, they uh, list everything in dollars, not thousand dollars. So typically, when you look at a cash flow report and you see thirty-five thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars in the receipts of customers, that is thirty-five point one million dollars. But for Triple Three D, that's actually thirty-five thousand one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of cash receipts for the quarter. They don't spend a lot of money. In fact, only twenty-five point seven thousand dollars in staff costs. So it seems like they might not employ a lot of workers and only $71.2,000 in administration costs. Now, the main way they do generate revenue or cash, maybe, probably, I shouldn't say revenue, is through government grants and tax incentives. In fact, over the past six months, they have received $198,000 in government grants and tax incentives, and only $54,500 in operational cash. So the only reason they have been operational cash flow positive for the last six months and for the financial year 21 is because of government grants and tax incentives. They didn't receive a lot of grants and tax incentives for this particular quarter, only 20,000. And because of that, they were operational cash flow negative by $47,600. They did begin this quarter <clears throat> with $197,000 of cash. So they were running out of cash, but uh, finished it with 662,000 because of that capital raising, which raised Five hundred forty-five thousand, but they did have to issue three hundred and sixty-three million shares to raise that amount of cash. One of the things I like to see for any company I am doing a little bit of research on is receipts or revenue growing through time. So here we have the quarterly receipts history for Triple Three D going back to the September quarter, two 
2016 and in fact this is the complete opposite to what you want to see instead of receipts growing receipts have been shrinking through time and their record quarter was way back in December quarter of 2017 when they received two hundred forty thousand forty three thousand dollars of receipts in fact the first uh, five quarters it seemed uh, like this company was growing they grew receipts from eleven thousand to two hundred forty three thousand unfortunately they could not keep their momentum going because receipts have fallen quite precipitously since then all the way down to thirty five thousand dollars in the most recent quarter so it seems like their revenue streams and in regards to the figurines and bobbleheads aren't bringing a lot of cash in at this point in time as we look at the daily chart for triple 3d all the way back to 2016 to present the only way to describe this chart is ugly share price back when they uh, listed or backdoored onto the ASX was around about three or two cents but the share price fell all the way down to 0.1 cent and it hovered around 0 0.1 0 0.2 cents during 2019 into 2020 there was a little bit of interest in the company during the start of 2021 we saw the share price go from 0 0.1 cent to a high of 0.6 cents on high volumes I'm not sure what that interest was caused by but then that interest waned away during the rest of 2021 and the share price fell back to 0.1 cent at one point in time during August however since the start of 2022 and it has been in the first week of trading on the ASX there has been a little bit of interest in this company and we have seen share price increase from 0.2 to 0.4 cent on increasing volume now it'll be interesting to see how the market uh, sees this potential outbreak out breakout in triple three d's share price i will be staying clear right now because i would prefer to see uh, any breakout in the share price uh, coincide with some positive financial news and we really haven't seen that with this company just yet however if there does start to be a little bit more hype in this 3d printing area this is definitely one company that could benefit from that hype. That's all I have for this look at Triple 3D Printing. They are the first company on the ASX to release their December quarter Appendix 4C. Congratulations to the management of this company. If you know a lot more about this company and would like to impart on your knowledge, feel free to write a long comment in the comment section of this video. If you have other questions about this company or any other company on the ASX, please leave it in the comment section and I might be able to answer you depending on time constraints. Anyway, the last thing I should always mention in the video is I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a great day, have a great week. Talk to you later, bye.